Pradhana Sanskrit, pradhana is an adjective meaning, most important, prime, chief or major. The Shatapatha Brahmana, Shatapatha Brahmana gives its meaning as the chief cause of the material nature SB or the creative principle of nature SB the Samkhya school of Indian philosophy employs the word, pradhana, to mean the creative principle of nature, as the original root of matter, the prime matter but which according to Bhadarayana's logic is the unintelligent principle which cannot be the one consisting of bliss. <inaudible> Overview Kapila introduces the concept of pradhana, the matter from which the world has been created. According to the Samkhya school, pradhana is the original root of matter defined as the state of equilibrium of the three gunas, sattva, rajas and tamas, the three modes of prakriti material nature. Prakriti is eternal and all-pervading, unlimited and the material cause, eternally producing everything but insentient. Purusha is unproduced, free from all action and modification, without attributes, all-pervading consciousness, individual and separate for each body. Pradhana is called anamanam, the inferred entity, meaning purely hypothetical, which when manifest becomes the efficient and the material cause of creation. <laughs> Rig Vedic concept of the creator and creation Rishi Madhachanda tells us Rig Veda IE.5 that Vyavindraska Sedatha Sutanam Vajinivasu Tava Yatamupa Dravat the entire solar system and all those forces supporting it which are themselves supported by the Creator render all created objects visible i.e. known, to all living beings who in their turn are drawn towards those very objects. This means that all objects whether living or not living, moving or not moving, act, interact and co-act in accordance with their respective qualities and tendencies, and become involved in works, which is so because the Creator having created all this entered into the created as the efficient and material cause of creation, the created as the whole universe of objects. And, Rishi Vishwakarma Bhovana informs Rig Veda X 82.5 that, Paro divo para ina prathivya paro devabarajarayadasti kam svigarbam prathamam dadra apo yatra deva samapashanta visvi The Supreme Being, the formless object of devotion, is beyond the infinite space, far away from this earth, beyond all things and beings yet is to be found within the tiniest of tiny particles of matter known to all ordinary beings, learned beings and the devadas gods. but it is a well-established fact that origination belongs to all entities that have existence in his Karika on the Mandukya Upanishad I.6. The Creator caused all things to be made from the eternal cause i.e. from the primordial undefined matter Pratanasia Aukasa Rig Veda I 30.9, Kapila, the founder of the atheistic Samkhya philosophy, does not refer to God as the Creator of this world of objects, and Samkhya Pravachana Sutra states Isvarasiddhi, also interpreted to mean, there is no proof for the existence of God. Kanada admitting the existence of God believes that from the knowledge of the tattvas arises the non-apprehensiveness of the unseeable one who is other than the present body the roots of the Samkhya philosophy are found in Rig Veda Suktas 129 and 221, in Atharvaveda by.8 and by.43, in the Shatapatha Brahmana and the Sankhyana Brahmana in which the Atman is called the 25th principle, and its origin in the Upanishads. Sankara identifies Kapila with the Vedic Kapila who burnt the sons of Sagara and the Buddhist legends mention Kapila as a predecessor of Gautama Buddha. Kapila's disciple Asori and Pankashika are mentioned in the Mahabharata Saint 12 <laughs> Samkhya concept The term, Samkhya, derived from the word, Sankhya numbers, refers to the sense of thinking with regard to some basic principles of the knowledge of Purusha, and to counting with regard to the twenty-four principles of Prakirti, and therefore, to right discrimination. 
The reading of the texts indicate that Chandogya Upanishad, Katha Upanishad and Shvetashvatara Upanishad were written after the formulation of the Samkhya system of thought. The sage of the Shvetashvatara Upanishad v. calls God Pradhanasetrajñapadarganesa the Lord of Pradhana or Prakirti, of individual souls and of the gunas, the word Kapalam of Shish. U. Saint v.2 is said to refer to the originator of the Samkhya philosophy. This system, close to Vedanta, is realistic and dualistic. Its concept of creation is based on the premises that a thing which has never existed can never be brought into existence, and that the effect which is ever existent before the operation of the cause is always related to the cause. The Samkhya system follows the logic of the then generally accepted conclusions that inference results from perception DRSTM, both are means of cognition pramanas of existence bhava, and non-existence is only a form of perception. Primordial nature or matter pradana, spirit purusha, and the rest mahat etc., which exist cannot be perceived by the senses because of their extreme subtlety and not due to non-existence. The manifested possessing and dependent on a cause is not eternal, not pervasive, active, inferable, having parts and subordinate, the unmanifested is reverse of this. Ishvara Krishna thereafter, explains Samkhya Karika Sloka 11, Trigunamavivki Visaya Samanyamasatanam Prasavadarmi Vyaktam Tatha Pradhanam Tadvaparadastatha Ka Puman that the primordial nature pradhanam like the manifested is also constituted by three gunas, non-distinguishable it cannot be distinguished from itself and so also mahat and the rest from pradhana, objective, common, non-intelligent and prolific, but the spirit pumanam or purusha is the reverse of both of them yet similar in some respect. The three gunas though contradictory to each other cooperate and put into effect their single purpose of bringing about emancipation of the purusha. The existence of indistinguishability etc., in the manifest and the unmanifest is proved from their being constituted of the three gunas and from the absence of their reverse, the existence of the unmanifest is proved from the effects possessing the attributes of their cause. Manifest is directly perceived because of pleasure, pain and delusion, in the case of Purusha these are non-existent. The cause unmanifest must possess the qualities of its effect manifest, therefore, pradhana exists. The unmanifest cause exists because of 1 the finite nature of special objects, 2 homogeneity, 3 evolution being due to the efficiency of cause, 4 the differentiation between cause and effect, 5 the non-difference or merging of the whole world of effects, 6 its operation through the three attributes gunas by combination and modification, through difference arising from diverse nature of several receptacles of these attributes. Purusha exists because one, the avyakta, pradhana, mahat, ahankara and other products exist for the sake of another, two, of the absence of three gunas and other properties, three, there must be some controller, four, there must be some experience, and five, of the tendency of activities towards final beatitude. Bularama says pradhana is three gunas itself and therefore cannot be their adhara basis or source, whereas Vamsidara says that gunas are in the form of karana in mahat, etc. and in the form of samuha in pradhana. <laughs> Badarayana's refutation of pradhana Ramanuja and Sankara interpret the word asabadam meaning not mentioned in the Upanishads in Ixadarnasabdam BSII.5 to mean the pradhana of the samkhyas and not meaning not as the denial of pradhana being the cause of the universe because it is not mentioned in the Upanishads and from the word ikshate meaning seeing or thinking reference by Badarayana to Brahman who visualized and created the vital force prana Prasna Upanishad v.3 to 4 created the worlds Aitareya Upanishad II.1-2 is to be understood. 
Sankara in his commentary on this and the following sutras explains a insentient pradhana cannot illuminate sattva that can only be illumined by the consciousness of the witnessing soul, b an insentient pradhana cannot have the sentient atman or brahman as its essence, c atman implies a conscious entity in the primary sense which can instruct, here brahman is that existence which visualizes and not pradhana, d pradhana is not even indirectly referred to by the Upanishads as the sentient Atman, even if it is the cause of all objects of experience it will still remain unknown because the experiencing subjects as a class are not modifications of pradhana, e sentient beings can merge only in a conscious entity which pradhana is not, f consciousness is apprehended uniformly as the cause, g Shvetashvatara Upanishad v. 9 introduces the all-knowing God, who has no master or originator or ordainer, as the cause and the ordainer of the masters of the organs. The Sutra II.12 Anandamayobhyasat, is textually wrong, it should have been worded Anandobhyasat because Ananda is absolute freedom and if Ananda is embodied it becomes non-limited i.e. subjected to limitation, the inert pradhana cannot create because activity is necessary for creation, it is not a directive intelligent entity for initiating activity, and because there is no external agency to urge it to act or restrain it from action. A spontaneous action of pradhana is not possible, it cannot modify in the absence of purpose and it cannot have a desire to evolve. Purusha is intelligent and indifferent but there is no third agency to bring Purusha near pradhana to effect a connection between the two for starting the activity of creation. Pradhana cannot be active because there can be no relation of principle or subordinate guna when the gunas are in equilibrium to constitute pradhana. Creation cannot proceed from inert or dead matter. <inaudible> Madhvacharya's interpretation The Brahma Sutras of Bhadarayana represents the first comprehensive treatment in a systematic manner of the vast corpus of Vedic thought. The Vedic tradition viewed truth as subsisting eternally as subtle sound heard and then conveyed to others via speech. However, Madhva, the founder of Tattvavada realism, interprets the word asabhadam to refer to Brahman who is inexpressible because he is an object of knowledge. Madhva contends that an object presented in illusory perception is an absolute unreality and no illusion can be explained without the acceptance of two necessary reals, adisthana substratum and pradhana prototype of the superimposed object arapya. The Dvaita school of Hindu philosophy, Ishvara, the cause of the universe as the Svatantra Tattva independent reality and the created universe as the Asvatantra Tattva dependent reality which is a transformation of pradhana matter. 